YouTube is full of videos about good knives. It's full of videos about bad knives. It's high time that someone makes a video about weird knives. This is Three Weird Knives, and I'm your host, JJ Jinx. Let's get weird. Welcome to the debut episode of Three Weird Knives with JJ Jinx. So the story behind this series is that I have a lot of knives, and a lot of them are weird. And, and sometimes it's hard to come up with a reason to talk about them, but I figured since they're all weird, maybe that's what they have in common, and maybe that's the only reason I need to talk about them. So we're going to kick this off with this knife that I got from Amazon. It was less than 10 bucks, <clears throat> and interesting thing about this right off the bat is that one, it comes in a plastic bag, and the key ring also comes in a plastic bag, just a smaller one. So there's that, kind of a waste of packaging, but whatever, it's weird, it fits. So what we're looking at is a keychain knife. You can get these in a few different colors. They have them in like a brass color and a silvery aluminum color. And the blade is inside of this cylinder. And in order to get it out, you have to push this knob and you can see there's a spring in there. So this is a spring loaded knife, like so. And then you turn this over and lock it into place, bayonet style. So it's technically an OTF knife. Um, and it is spring-loaded, except it doesn't spring out. Instead, it springs back in, like so. And the knife blade comes out of this little slot, which is contained in a plastic circle at the top. And that plastic circle also rotates as you rotate the blade. So, yeah, that, that's kind of clever. It keeps dirt and lint out of it. And it's fun to close, too. And down here you got a little hole for the key ring, and you just hang it off of your keys. And the blade itself doesn't look like it would be useful for very much, except for perhaps opening boxes or letters and nothing else. I think it would be really cool if someone made something like this, but with like D2 steel or something like that. I would buy it. And next, we have a Freemason's knife. And we know it's a Freemason thing because it's got a ruler and a compass and the letter G. And the G stands for the Great Architect of the Universe. A lot of knife makers make Freemason stuff. Um, it's not something I'm really into. I am not a Freemason. But if they gave everybody one of these, I would join tomorrow. Packaging is foam board, which has a cutout for the knife. So that's always nice. And you got the Prop 65 warning on the bottom. So the reason I picked up this knife is because of the very unique opening mechanism. And I actually kind of like the, the design. This is a very uh, sort of art deco. It looks like a building you would see at like Rockefeller Center or something like that. So the way you open it is you have a little clasp down here that kind of swings out. Be careful because these edges are actually hella sharp. And then you pull apart the handle and this happens. Oh, yes. You get the actual Freemason symbol. Just like that. And you have two rulers over here. And you continue. And then push it up a little bit like that. And go ahead and close it again, except this time the blade is now deployed. And just for a measure of safety, the latch can be replaced. And there you have it. The Freemason's Dagger. Now it's only sharpened on the one side, so it's a sort of a dagger cut, but not completely. And, um, well, if you look at the grind all the way to the tip there, they, they kind of missed. Uh, the black paint doesn't really look even. Um, I don't know what kind of look they were going for with that. And same thing on the other side. They just completely missed the tip of the blade with that cut. That is a shame because, I mean, one of the things Freemasons are known for is pride in their uh, craftsmanship and uh, architecture. And, hmm, I mean, the G, you know, Grand Architect of the Universe or whatever. 
and then the knife blade is cut like that. Such a disgrace. And then to close it, it's basically just the reverse. Like that. Then you kind of help it out a little bit. I like how the rulers come together in these two little like gear things. And then you shut the blade. Boom. Weird, huh? I've actually seen another <clears throat> another knife that opens and closes like that. I think the design was, um, I want to say it was a Smith & Wesson knife or something like that. I don't really care because this is much, much better. Because the Freemason's knife has that novelty factor that just makes it worth it, in my opinion. And weird knife number three for this episode is this knife by Rough Rider. This is the Pastel Assistant Open Folder. Why did I get this knife and why do I think it's a little weird? It's the colors. You have a nice pastel pink set of scales, a soft yellow blade, and a nice low ride seafoam green pocket clip with black hardware. I really like the aesthetics of this knife. It is very vaporwave, and that's kind of my thing. I uh, got this from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Actually, I got the uh, Freemason knife from there, too. And they had another one of these knives that had, a, you know, basically the same thing, but slightly different colors. <clears throat> but number one, I liked this one better. And number two, they were sold out of the other one. So I, when I saw that the other one had sold out, I was like, I got to jump on this and get it before it's gone too, and I don't know if or when it will ever come back. The Rough Rider Pastel Series Assisted Open Vaporwave Knife. Dig it.